Hey everybody, Jochen Haydn here, and I'm back with the Helsin vs. Haydn Scenario 2 campaign. This is 15 December 1941, Turn 9, Combat Replay and Analysis. Um, so, last turn, if you guys remember, I was pretty down, downtrodden, uh, disappointed, put out about how things were going, but, you know, I'm over it now. I'm ready to keep playing. I'm going to do my best. Um, we have a lot of activity in the Dutch East Indies over near Saram. And, uh, you know, we've got stuff in China and probably another big battle in the air at Rangoon today. So let's hope we do a little better than last time because we can't take those losses again. Let's see. Okay, and here we go with December 15th, 1941. I'm sure this is going to be a slaughter. Because Helsin only knows one thing. Total annihilation. Oh, well, that's not good. So, uh, a, a Reni Dupont takes a torpedo just to the south of Pago Pago, southeast. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> there it is. Uh, I'm sure this will sink at some point. I don't think we're going to be able to get it to an island in time to save it. But you never know, I guess, right? That does appear to be a big AK. Nah, see, there it is. There it is. Dang. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! Finally! A little payback, huh? Oh, perfect. Sugar boats to the rescue. A little retribution. Hmm. I think that one, that's not going to make it. I think it took two torpedoes. That, that's not, that's, that's over. So we trade one ship for another ship. Uh, this, oh, okay. So this one is almost certainly going to sink. Japanese AKs aren't very uh, durable. Two torpedoes on fire, heavy damage. And this bad boy was loaded with some troops. So we will see what comes of that. There it is. It just sank. All right, one to one, but ours was empty and his was full of stuff. So, That's, whoa. Okay, so it looks like uh, i got some battleships coming into Wenchow here. Let's fast forward through this and see what all he's got. So, wow, look at that. Dang. Okay, so he, he's got the Issei and the Fuso tied up at Wenchow here. We don't take a lot of casualties up front, but the, the damage to the actual city is, is substantial. This is something that I don't have a lot of experience with. Uh, fires. Um, I know that you can have that. They affect your manpower centers and things like that, but I, I don't really know, you know, what happens after that. So we'll have to watch this fires and see what, what becomes of it. That's my inexperience with this game going late into the campaign or things can even catch on fire. Interesting. Okay. All right. And he's already landing on Sinkawang because why, sh why not? This is a great base to power project further south. So he brings in a heavy cruiser, light cruiser, and one um, AK. And our 40 millimeter Beaufort's AA guns attempted to fire on the AK. And there he's coming in again. I might let this ride out just a little bit longer to see if our um, our 40 mils fire back. Sendai's not going to do much damage. Uh, these guns aren't big enough to do much. The heavy cruisers and up are where your real damage makers are at. All right, let's, let's fast forward. This is taking too long. All right, so we got more, more stuff in this task force than what we just saw. So the first one appeared to be more bombardment focused. So, all right. He takes a little bit of casualties from an SNLF squad, Sasebo, third SNLF, and he's already bringing in a, a airfield air force battalion because he wants to use this base right away for air ops.
Okay, more troops coming ashore. And more. Normally, when the screen flashes quickly like that, it's due to it, he's just unloading supply at that point. So his troops are off. Now he's stopping off supply. Oh, great. Oh, thank you. So RO-64 is definitely at Luganville, but he misses with two torpedoes on this AK here. And our rowboats don't carry more than 10 torpedoes or so. Oh, but you know, why not try another try here? So now the uh, now he's trying on the surface here. And second time's a charm, right? That's that's quite unfortunate to us. All right, so that's that's sunk. We we get that. So this thing goes down. We don't see any indication of troops being lost. So hopefully they whatever was on board had already unloaded. But you know, I, I'll have to look and see at the end. And that sank. I don't recall what was on that thing. All right, now we're on. Now we're in the AM phase of operation, so we'll be doing be, we're doing some spotting here of his ships. Oh boy, I can't wait for this. All right, this is going to be a rough day. I'm telling you right now, uh, Rangoon's going to be a slaughter for us once again. And I'll explain my reasonings later on. Uh, he's really going for Baton, interestingly enough. And I'm fine with that. So he's targeting the airfield to keep us from building up forts at Baton. This is just a sweep. He's bombing this unit that was uh, retreating from Victoria Point. And again, coming in in, um, in waves. Look at this raid on Changsha. This is probably, looks like he's going to target the field. And he did. 69 Bettys. Look at that. Impressive. He's trying to keep us from building up forts or building up the airfield, whatever. When, when we take base damage, the engineers have to stop building whatever they're building and transition into repairing the damage from the raids. And that's not anything I can control. It's a game mechanic. So that is how you as a player stop the other player from building something at that base. You target the port, the, um, the, the airfield, and you, you cause damage to that. And your engineers automatically get pulled off to repair that damage. I wish there was a way to, to turn that off or to direct them better, but that's just the way the game is made. You know, old game, old mechanics. It is what it is. Some sweeps. And another fragment coming in to hit this uh, base force. So a little Sally Raid here trying to slow us down as we get out. And another fragment of it. Uh, disabled squads are fine. We can take disabled squads all day. It's the destroyed that are more concerning to me. Because disabled squads can be repaired. Or can be restored. All right, now we're back in Malaya. The heavy rain and the terrain here are probably helping us with the, uh, the bombing. Yeah, another raid. He must be getting ready to target this hex here. Got some bombers going after the Lucy War area. There, yeah, these guys are are um, marked for death at the beginning of every American cam uh, Allied campaign here because they're so far deep behind uh, the Japanese lines. I don't know what they're even doing there. It it stinks that I have to give him free kills right off the bat. Yeah, he's, he's throwing all kinds of stuff at this. Little dojo, uh, dojo? How about, I don't want to say that name. A tojo sweep over Changsha. Another bombing raid as we retreat to Nanyang. Again, disabled. You can take it all day. And 
I'm still waiting for Burma and Rangoon. Okay, so that raid didn't accomplish much. We're in better terrain here, and the severe storms almost make the bombing uh, useless. It, oh, on, on top of that, these Sonyas carry, like, pea shooters. These bombs don't do a lot of damage. Okay, chainsaw. Where is the Rangoon party? I know it's coming. Wow. These guys are just getting experience every day flying. They have no targets, but why not, you know? They have nothing else to do. Okay, so that's the AM phase. The PM phase. I'm still waiting for something to happen here. I'm sure it's going to be uh, awful. So now our PM... Uh, what you call it? The... Uh, where all your spotting aircraft do their detection. And we also get spotted. Ah, here we go. I'm sure this is going to be fun. Alright, so what I am going to do is I, I, I don't want to sit here and watch all my planes die over the 20 minutes. So take a good look. We got Oscars. We got the um, Flying Tigers and a bunch of British Buffaloes here. And I'm going to fast forward through this and let's see how this resolves. My guess is that these Oscars are going to wipe the floor with us because um, that's just how it goes. Let's go. Yeah, they're terrible. Absolutely terrible. And they get through all of those planes. So we're showing... I don't believe this one bit. Five Oscars shot down for one P-40 and two Buffaloes. I don't buy it. I'm, I feel like we lost more than that. Uh, and you know what's coming next, right? The zeros. And they're going to wipe the floor with us when they come through. Um, the only thing we have going for us is we are flying directly over our base. Okay. We are at the same altitude as he is. All right. Because we do have altitude restrictions due to the rules of our campaign. So I can at least know he cannot be higher than me. So there won't be any diving on this or that. It's going to be more or less an equal confrontation. Um and if our planes are damaged, they have a higher chance of getting back to base and save or just basically fly straight down. And our pilots, if they're shot down, we have a higher likelihood of them being recovered because they're not over enemy territory. His pilots, on the other hand, if they get shot down over Rangoon, they're done. They're either going to be uh, killed or captured. They're not going home. So let's continue. Wait for the zeros. You know they're coming. Another raid on this fragment leaving Victoria Point. I don't know why Japanese players fixate on this so much. This unit is so useless, and it's gonna, it takes them months to get out of here. Why even bother? You know, I'm sure there's better targets for these bombers than this, but, you know, whatever. Lodric did the same thing. Where are the Zeros over Burma? Where are they? I know they're coming. Is kill oh, there they are. <laughs> yep, on cue. Now we're gonna lose almost the rest of our aircraft this time because we're already weakened from the from the uh, Oscars, and these guys are fresh. So watch, watch, watch it. It's gonna be bad. Yeah, we're gonna lose almost everything here. So it appears that we only kill one zero. He shoots down six more of our aircraft, which is such a crappy trade. I hate that. 
Uh, this game just craps on P40s like it's going out of style. Uh, and the, the reality is his pilots are better. Uh, the scenario two pilots and the fact that he has more aircraft and better pilots, the zero is unstoppable for the first several months of the war. We have no answer for it. Our pilots are crap. Um, our training program is crap. So we have no way of really stopping any of this. He has complete autonomy, uh, air superiority over the whole campaign for three months straight. That's the PM phase. Now we're going to go into seeing how the ground war goes, which I'm not expecting anything crazy here because we're still kind of jockeying for position on the ground. I think we... Did we skip it? Oh, okay, no. Uh, yeah, the ground phase is coming up next, right? There it is, okay. Japanese, okay, so here's Hong Kong. I I don't know how many more turns we can hold out. Yep, there, there it is. They got it. Hello, my misguided oh, we friend. We have to listen to her. This is nice. your number one Take enemy, your off. Orphan Anne, from Radio Tokyo, with another blow to your morale and some music to so console loud. you. Today, the Imperial government announced that the ever victorious forces of the Japanese Empire have captured Hong Kong. All right, so that's it for Hong Kong. Um, and these casualties you end up always taking. There's no way out of it. So it's guaranteed points for the Japanese. When they take Hong Kong, all the units there are surrounded and they die. So we lost everything there. Um, all of these are dead. Now, what I will be looking to do in the following part of the turn is I will be bringing these back. Uh, several of these are good, like the Kowloon Brigade uh, are good. Um this base force is good so these are these are a couple units that i will be paying political points to bring back and i'll show you how you do that when we get to the back half of this turn um and maybe the canadian ones too i don't know we'll i'll, I'll consider it but that's what he came in with which is very standard and that's what we lost and there's numbers and you can expect a massive influx in our army loss points and his basically nothing Okay, now he's attacking here. He's trying to uproot us from this thing. And he did, of course. These guys retreat off to the off into the sunset, right? Okay, and then we take a lot of casualties here. Unavoidable. And then uh, he's going to land it here at this little dot base and take it. Because there's nothing there. See, he took almost he just used a bare minimum amount of troops to do it because he knew that it was a free base and what that does is it cuts off our retreat path so when he takes Minato we can't retreat back towards sedate sedat sedate so very smart very smart um not sure if he's gonna win here no he didn't so he just attacked here at oh wait this is a bombardment attack I all right And then Kuching were bombarding these guys. I don't know why they're even wasting their time. Okay, and Moratai, he'll take that for free. Okay, which completely expected. See, bare minimum of troops. He split that thing up. He split that thing up into pieces because he doesn't need to waste a lot of troops for these dot bases. Okay, well, that's it for the ground phase, and that's really it for the turn. Now we're going to get to see what's expanding, uh, fortifications, bases, stuff like that. And then hopefully here, we'll get a good look at what our reinforcements are going to be. Wow, look at all those ships out there. Shringar. How to fix that? Oh, hey, there we go. My Sims class destroyers are arriving in uh, Panama. 
I love these guys. These are one of my favorite class of, of destroyers in reality. And in the game, they're pretty good too. They have okay range, good guns, decent ASW for the beginning of the of the war. Uh, like There's a rating of four. I think they carry four weapons. So good to have the Sims. Let's look at the... Uh, we'll analyze the turn here. I, I was... I'm expecting a lot of casualties at Rangoon, but we'll take a look. Okay, we're back. Let's take a look at the numbers. Okay, where are we at? Here we go. Uh, well... Oh, okay. Aircraft losses today. Uh, 20 to 16. Definitely not a huge blowout. Let's look at what... Oh, wow. Okay, so, judging by this, we shot down... Or he lost fif 15 Oscars today for a trade of 10 uh, Flying Tiger J uh, aircraft and 9 Buffaloes. He also lost two zeros and a smattering of other unconcerning types. But this is definitely a better outcome today than what I was expecting. And I can't be upset about this. I know that the that these aircraft are not as good as his. I know our pilots are not as good as his. But the fact that we kind of more or less kept up with him is is a good thing and I'm I'm happy about that. I, I can't complain. This gives me a little bit of hope. Because I got something else on the way. Let's look at the top pilots. Um we don't really have any aces yet, but we do have a smattering of other pilots that have some kills. Alright? Today we have ten wounded in action pilots and four KIA and they're almost all from that unit. Let's look at who those are. So from the reserve pool, or from the pools in general, let's take a look at wounded pilots. So a lot of pilots are coming back, uh, which is the benefit of having these guys wounded over your own lines. So look here. A lot of these AVG guys, they're good pilots, so they're going to get them back. We're going to send this guy to reserve. Let me fix this. We're going to send this. So send that guy. Send this guy. We'll see how many of these actually we can get back. All right. We do have a lot of wounded pilots, but like I said, a lot of them are indicating they'll be back by the end of the month. All right. So going over to reserve now, this is what we got. This guy here, he's not coming back, so we're going to retire him. This guy, retired. This guy, yeah, Captain Reed ain't going to make it, man. He probably lost an arm. Ferris. All right. And uh, the rest we're going to get back. So, you know, not terrible. Most of our wounded pilots will be back. Okay. Army lost points this turn. Definitely higher. All right. Uh, and that's due to the blowout at Hong Kong and also the losses we took in Malaya. Ship sunk did creep up, but so did his. So looking at ship sunk last turn, we are tracking the uh, Tamashima Maru which was lost at sea near uh, northern end of the Philippines. We lost the Irene DuPont, which was unfortunately a very good cargo ship. Uh, this is one of the ones I would not like to lose. All right. We also lost uh, this ship near Luganville, which wasn't, wasn't that great. I believe this was loaded with supply now that I look at the ship. So not a huge loss there. And a couple motor launches were lost while building in Hong Kong. Nothing I can do about that. So those are the losses. So now it's indicating 126, which is just astronomical, right? To two. All right. Uh, you know, it is what it is. So get a good look at the uh, ops report here. Uh, definitely not the worst thing ever. And I'm really, really excited that we're so close in numbers right here. Uh, and the reason being is that we he didn't attack Pearl Harbor, so we didn't lose that many aircraft there like you typically would. So we're doing okay for aircraft loss points right now. Uh, let's take a quick look at SIGINT, see if there's anything important here. So going to Ambon. Heavy volume radio traffic at Camran Bay. So he's sending a lot to Ambon, as you can see here. It's loaded on a Japanese AK moving to Ambon. So here's what I know about that. Ambon is down here, and he's sending guys here. So we need to be ready for that, okay? I think um, I think we can prepare for this. 
that this is one of those times where SIGINT is very useful. We have multiple mentions of aircraft of uh, ships moving stuff towards Ambon, right? So we can prepare for that. We can start stacking aircraft there. Or we can get prepared for him to come in. Now, if he now the flip side to that is if he comes in with, um, you know, uh, aircraft, we're we're kind of in trouble. But anything short of that, we have a chance of maybe doing some damage to him. So awesome job, Allied SIGINT. Uh, taking a look at the ops report, we can briefly scroll through here. I'll tell you if I see anything noteworthy. ABG guy up to kill three. A lot of a lot of written off aircraft here. Hmm. So he captures Hong Kong, Sedate, and Moratai. All right. We get the Sims uh, fleet in at Balboa, which is excellent. A bomber force at Pearl Harbor and an infantry regiment at Fort Ord. And taking a look at this, the loss of the Kauri is our ship. Um, and there he goes. The AK Tamashima Maru is reported to have been sunk near Laog, which tracks with what we believe to be the case. We heard a ship sinking, and that would be over in this area. So there you go. Uh, not too bad. Let's, let's briefly talk about the situation because we can get through this pretty fast today. In China, we're continuing to retreat in this direction, but as you can see, He's kind of got us cornered here in many different places. So I'm worried about a lot of these troops getting cut off and lost. We'll have to do what we can. Uh, he has a task force in the in the city of Wenchow. And this is, this is what you can see what happens when you have this. Um, it's obviously doing damage to the port. And I believe when you have fires, it damages your manpower. As far as I understand, if any of you guys can explain to me how fires work even better, I'd love to hear it because I'm not familiar with the mechanic because I haven't been that deep into the game yet. So sa save me the hassle of looking up in the, in, the, uh, in the manual and tell me what happens when you have something on fire. Uh, other than that, we're just falling back and building our defensive lines. There's really nothing else to say about China. Uh, here's the big action this turn was... Activity in Rangoon. Now we are starting to run out of aircraft here, as you can see. Most of them are damaged or disabled, destroyed. So we won't be able to maintain this level of uh, activity for long. Hopefully, I can get some sort of reinforcements in the Rangoon soon. Some another aircraft source because this is just not sustainable. But as you can see by this, he is well on his way. Like I showed you last turn, he's he's heading for Molmen at, at breakneck speed. He's got troops here, 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 and here, and they're going to take here and cut this Burma Road probably within a month. So we don't have a lot of time in Rangoon, and I don't have time to get the troops in there that I need. But we'll do what we can to attrit his aircraft while we have that capability. In Malaya, we just lost this grid hex here. So pretty soon, uh, when he takes Temelo, he'll have this whole. He'll just have a couple other hexes to deal with to open up this rail line, and then he'll have a pathway to get all these troops up to Bangkok, and then forward. Um, any day now we're expecting these troops in uh, Johor Bahru to head into Singapore, and they will definitely take it. Like, it won't even be a, a – not even a judgment call. They're going to shock attack across this bay and take it, and that is it for Singapore. What can we do? Not really anything. This part of the Dutch East Indies is quiet for now. I did move some destroyers into – uh, in the area around Java to deal with the subs. So we're going to use some of these Dutch destroyers going forward to escort the remaining fuel guys out because I don't want to lose any more tankers and I want all this fuel. So we'll take a look here. So we can undock that. Undock that. Undock this. Oh, it's already undocked. That's loading. Oh, nope. We will undock. I think we just have a couple tankers to dock. 
And then there we go. We'll load these guys up. And we'll get what we can out of here. That's still quite a bit of fuel. So, like I said, Dutch destroyers uh, are heading over to, uh, to Gillette Jap to help get our, our fuel out of here while we still can. So, here's the Dutch East Indies in this part over near the Saram Sea. Uh, he just took Sedate so he could block off our, our retreat out of Minato. He took Moritai. He took this last turn. And now he's got an Armada heading towards Ambon. I'm sure he'll take Ternate and a couple other places as well. But our Sigant is telling us he's going for Ambon. So we'll I'll do what I can to prepare for that. This part of Australia is pretty quiet right now. We are getting fuel in here and quite a bit. Let's look at the fuel levels we have so far. And we have way more coming. So tons of fuel flowing in here from the Dutch East Indies, which I'm very happy about. Can't complain about what we did get out, which is way more than I ever got out in the Lodry game. So that's something. And that's fuel that we really need in Australia that will enable us to sustain our naval ops for quite a while. Over here, we're just moving ships around and reconsolidating. Same in, in here. Just kind of get our act together. Now, uh, at Luganville, we know he's got a sub there. See, we have detection. And he's going to be there for a while. The ship that I lost was out of this task force, which came from Sydney. And they're only here to unload some supply. That's their only job. So uh, that ship was definitely not anything I was worried about. I am worried about these guys, though, because I'm unloading a lot of base forces um a bunch of a, a bunch of different things into uh Luganville. I'm going to get a head start on building this up early because I know what how what happens when you don't. But we already got quite a bit of aviation support here and as soon as I have the engineers to to match them, we can start working on the airfield capacity. And if I can get this to a size 2 airfield, I feel like it'll be kind of self-sustaining to the point where we can get aircraft here and hold it for a lot longer than before. I wish I had done this in the Lodric game because I don't think Lodric had the wherewithal to realize what was happening at Luganville until much later. Uh, Helson definitely does because he's he's seen it all and done it all. So over here is is the area that we lost that ship. I'll tell you right now it came from these guys here. Um, this is just a task force that I'm relocating to LA. I'm glad he didn't catch the tanker because uh, that would have been a mess. He did catch that thing. So all these guys, I am going to change their routing because he is definitely wise to us. So we're going to head a bit further south and around because he knows that we're kind of heading this way. He knows that if this is a lazy way to get ships to um, L.A. because he's done this before. So we're just going to reroute these guys around. No big deal. Okay. We do have a lot of ships heading to L.A. though. Taking a look at ADAC, we've already got our first set of troops arriving here. And this is just more or less a security force. That was the closest thing that I could get in here. But we'll start unloading those. And I have a conga line of other ships coming in to get the sub base started ASAP. On my old game, I went for Dutch Harbor first, and that was a mistake. ADAC is the play. That's definitely the best place to build up. So we're going to do that here right from the start. So I am learning from, as I play these things, I learn a more optimized ways of of doing stuff the just the unfortunate thing was i'm playing against a guy that's so good and has played so many times and has the benefit of scenario two that um it, it's not doing me a lot of good all these lessons learned they're still not good enough to to defeat a guy like helson early on so that is what it is i'm feeling a little more upbeat this turn i don't hear as you can tell you don't have that i don't hear that doom and gloom in my voice i'm really happy with what happened to rangoon I know we're almost at aircraft, but we put up a much better fight this time, and I gotta be happy about that. So let's let's keep trying. We'll hold on to Rangoon as long as we can, and uh, I'm gonna keep doing my thing. My pessimism is a little bit lifted for now. Uh, I know that we're in for a long slog these first six months. It's gonna be way more miserable than what I've encountered with Lodric, but you know what? It's just how it goes. I volunteered for this, and I'm gonna play it through. I'm not quitting. I am not quitting. I don't care if all of India is on fire and Australia is underwater. I'm playing this through until we get to a realistic conclusion, a.k.a. the uh, auto victory, if he gets there. If he doesn't, then we're going to play this all the way to the end. So uh, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for supporting both me and Helson's channel. I've been 
my subscriber count is going through the roof right now. I think the algorithm has blessed our channel, but it's also you guys watching these videos and clicking that subscribe button. Uh, as you know, these videos are not monetized. I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this because I love what I'm doing. It's fun for me. This is my, my hobby when I'm not at work and I'm not doing stuff with my kids. And I love grand strategy games. So the fact that I get to share this with you guys and you guys are actually enjoying it makes it even better for me. So keep watching. Keep enjoying it. Uh, post your comments. Come to the Discord. Oh, that was a that was a timer telling me it's time to take the pizza out of the oven. So I got to go. I'll catch you guys in the next one.